I should say. And then remove the cards from the case. I tell them to turn over the face card, the top card on the deck. Or before that, I'll say, name what was your card? Name your card. Seven of diamonds. And turn over the top card. And they see that. And as an opener effect, that'll freak them out. Because now what they're remembering in their mind is that they picked out a card, put it back in, shuffled the cards themselves, put the cards in the case, put the case in their pocket, and then you name, then you told them to think of their card rising to the top, they opened up the case, it was in their pocket the whole time so you couldn't have manipulated the cards, and they pulled it out of the box, out of their pocket, out of the box, and flipped over a card and revealed their card. So you're getting a, a, a neat effect, it's not something that's just like, you know, you needed reasons to get into their pockets to leave this card in their pocket. Okay, so that's that's one way you can get the card into their pocket. There's other methods that you don't have to use a, you know, a card trick to do that. If you don't even like that effect that I just did there, you don't have to use that. Uh, other ways are you could have someone. Uh, I usually do this on a male. Uh, it's not as good as the female because most females don't carry wallets around, um, and they just. It, it's not. It, it kind of. It's kind of awkward to just take a wallet from a female. You know, people think you're trying to steal their money or something. So what I'll do, um, and I'll just use my wallet here. Uh, I'll have the person. I'll say, uh, do you have a dollar or a bill? Or actually, you just take your wallet out for once and just see what we, see what you got here. And after doing a few tricks, they're gonna be like, okay, well, let's see what he's gonna do. I want to see this. So they'll pull their wallet out, and when they go to open it up to go in and actually take the money out. You just grab them because I know what I'm looking for and reach in there and take out a dollar or five or whatever and do the effect. Um, what you can do there is have the card, and I'm not going to fold this, but you have it folded up into quarters. Uh, like We'll just take like this card. You have it folded up like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it's actually good if it's not perfect. And you just have it palmed in your hand there. Then when they pull out their wallet, you'll say something like, uh, they'll pull out their wallet, open it up, and you say, they'll go to look at it and say, do you have a dollar or a five or a ten or something? Look, look at, and you go, actually, you know what, I know what I'm looking for here, let me see. And you grab their wallet, and you just reach in with that palmed card, and you can throw that palmed card in their wallet, and go, let me see here, I know what I'm looking for. Yeah, there we go, I know what I'm looking for. And pull out a dollar, and what I do is I'll actually put... So I don't know what I'm looking for, and I'll put like some money, you know, in front of that card, so that it's in there. Like you can't see the card; it's hidden by the money. So I kind of cover it with like a couple bills, so that it's it's hard to be seen. And then when they go to put it back, they just open up, and they, you know, at the end of the effect, whatever effect you do with the bill, they put it back in, and they don't see that card folded up and walk with back in their pocket. Now, when it comes to the effect and you've had them pick the jack of clubs later on and I'll show you that now when you say Chair, you know what you have a wallet right like you have no idea you have a wallet open your check inside your wallet I want you to see something and when they open the wallet it should be open like it should be pushed open because the card is folded in there and they'll look inside and they'll see this folded up card in their wallet now they're going to remove that it's a fold up card inside their wallet and they're gonna freak out that way. So that's a way to do it. Or you can you can actually just shove it in like this if you can uh, palm it right. If you can get it palmed good and get it kinda in there and get it actually be able to get it in their wallet without them knowing. It's kinda hard to do that, but you can you can work that out. Or you can just actually put it behind their wallet like that. And then say, and then just put their wallet in their pocket for them after you pick the card out. That works too. So that's just two different methods to kind of get that card into their wallet, okay? That force card into their wallet or into their pocket. Um, so once you've done that, you've got the card in their pocket or their wallet or whatever you're doing. Now we're going to go into the uh, explanation of how to do the effect where you've actually caused the, uh, do the effect where you cause the card to go into their pocket or their wallet. So. Here we go with that, we'll get into the explanation of that. Alright, so now you've got the card into their pocket doing that first effect. What you're going to do now is, um, and I'm just going to use this card to kind of show this silver card so that you know where the, the card is in the deck and how the force is going to work. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> you've got the card in their pocket 
now you gotta do the effect. Um, what I recommend is that you don't do this effect immediately after, because now they're gonna know your hand was in their pocket, or you know, you were near them, you touched them, you could have got something into their pocket during this. So what I do is I wait five, ten more tricks, and I don't do any more effects to that same person that I just put the card in their pocket. I'll do all these other tricks to someone totally different, to other people, and then um, when I get 10, 15 tricks down the road, I'll say, here, uh, let's try something with you again. Um, or I'll just say, maybe I'll make it up as the first one. I'll say, let's try something with you. Uh, could you select the card? And I'll go into that, and I'll force the card into them. And I'll do this into their pocket thing. So, or their wallet, whichever way I've set this up. So, um, uh, you want to make sure that you do it. Ten, at least ten. I'm gonna say at least ten more tricks at, after you've done this first trick. So, the eleventh trick that you've done in your series of tricks, that's probably the time right there when you get to about the eleventh or twelfth fact. That's when you want to go into this. The longer you wait, the better it's gonna be because it's gonna be more time for them to forget that you uh, actually did this. You know that you actually put this card in their pocket. Okay. So. Uh, Let's get into the actual fact of getting it in their pocket. So, what I'm going to start, I'm going to do a force. Uh, you can do any force you want. I usually do the classic force, but I'm not going to teach the classic force. I teach a simpler force, uh, the crossing force. Uh, this is a really good force, and it really does look amazing. And I'm going to show you it first with the regular card, this card here, and then I'll do it with the silver card so you can actually see how it's done. Um, so, what you do in the crossing force, uh, you can start off by doing some shuffles. Mix whatever you want to do. Uh, it's up to you how you want to do it. Then you're going to cut the deck, and then, or you're actually you're not going to cut the deck. You're going to have them cut it. I'm sorry. So let me just mix these up again. Give them another cut here. Okay. And you have you set the cards down. And have them cut the pack. So tell them to cut them anywhere they want. So they cut the deck, and then you just twist this half at a 90 degree angle and set it across that other deck kind of marking where they cut it. Talk to them and tell them, you know, I didn't make you cut anywhere, right, and stuff like that, so that they know that this is fair. And you have them take the card that it was cut to, and they got the force card, the jack of clubs. So, how is that done? Let's reveal that right now, and we'll use the silver card to do that. Um, start out on top of the pack, so it starts out on top. And I just did a bunch of false shuffles and cuts. Uh, this one, if you can see. That's all I'm doing there. False shuffle there. I just false shuffle to the bottom. Back to the top. Uh, do a little false cut there. Uh, that cut, even with the card on top, looks like a real cut. I mean, it's it's pretty uh, deceptive. Uh, to do that, all I'm doing for that false cut there, give that away. Um, I'm just doing a swing cut. So I'm kind of doing a quick swing cut. And I'm just setting the bottom half down, and then setting the top half right on top. So I'm doing like two cuts in one. I'm swing cutting, and I'm setting them down. So I'm taking the top end of my hand, setting the bottom on the table, and setting the top right back on. But if you do it fast enough with a kind of a motion, it looks like you're cutting the pack. And if you do it with some misdirection too, just say, okay. So I'll do that, and I'll give the deck a cut, um, something like that. So. That always works. You can say, let me just actually, I'm just going to give the card a shuffle here. Uh, maybe some other shuffles. Uh, get them really mixed up. Uh, oops, give them a mixed up. And some shuffles here. Another shuffle. Uh, we'll do a cut like that. And it just it just flows together so seemingly, seamlessly, and it doesn't look like anything weird happened. So you still get their card on top, and you're going to force it using the the uh, crossing force. So the way that's done, cards on top, you tell them to cut the deck anywhere they want. And they really can't cut the deck anywhere they want. So they cut the pack, uh, unless they cut the deck like this. <laughs> they cut it like that and leave like three cards, or they cut it like that. That's not good. So I kind of show them how I want them to cut without actually showing them how they want them to cut. I kind of say, go ahead and just cut the card any anywhere you want. I go, go ahead and just give the cards a cut anywhere you want, and I kind of lift them up like this and show them. So uh, if I don't, if I think they're going to try to mess me up and cut like that, 
or if I think they're going to mess me up, kind of cut something like real small, you know. I want them to cut near the middle, but I don't want to tell them cut near the middle. So I'll say, just go ahead and give the cards a, a cut anywhere you want. Just go ahead and give them a cut, uh, and they'll come in and cut them. So now they've cut them close to the middle. It doesn't matter, uh, just as long as it's not a really small cut. Now you're going to take the bottom half, turn it a 90 degree angle, set it across. So you're probably getting uh, what goes on now. After you've done that, it's straightforward from here. That's actually the top half down there. This is the bottom half. But it looks natural because, you know, most people don't know, don't realize that. And they just know a cut is when you cut the cards here and then you set this on top. So it looks natural to go like that and just set that across. Okay. Now, through my experience of doing this, um, just saying go ahead and take your card doesn't work because people want to take this card. So what I do from my experience is I learn to actually pick this up and not only pick this up because I've done this too I one where I picked something I said go ahead and take the card you cut it to and they want they still want to take this or they want to take the bottom one off of here or something they want to take they don't want to take this card so uh, I don't know if it's just uh, I'm not explaining it right or what but I do this to make sure perfectly sure that they know what card I want them to take without actually telling them take this card okay so I say, go ahead and take the card you cut it to. And I just do a subtle, I tap that card. Just so subtle I can. Go ahead and take the card you cut it to. And they'll take that card. Now they got the card. They know what to do and it flows a lot smoother instead of them, you know, going like, go ahead and take the card you cut it to. And then they're trying to cut it again and take a card or something. And then I go, no, 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 not that. D take this card. Now, now, if I do that, it doesn't look like it's fair, you know. So, uh... It's so always um, so. I just kind of cut it and say, "Go ahead and take that cord that you cut it to." They take that cord, and they now got the force card. Okay. So now that that's done, that they've got the card, the force card, you're basically done. Uh, all you really have to do now is let them look at the card, memorize it. When they put it back, um, you got to do some method of getting rid of that card just in case they want to examine the deck when you're done. Uh, so what I like to do is just pawn it off and go right to my pocket. Uh, but there's other methods if you're not uh, confident in your palming ability or something. But I am going to show you how I palm the card off. So what I'll do is I'll have them place it back in. I'll do some kind of a control, maybe double undercut. Uh, which I use the double undercut a lot, more than I should use it actually. Uh, but uh, you can either use double undercut or use a, you know, I don't know, spread call if you can get into a spread call in the thing. So just kind of spread call it to the bottom. That was just a kind of a revealed spread call. Um, or, uh, I mean, any method you can really think of, uh, you know, catch a break and kind of cut it to the top like that. Um, whatever, whatever you like to do, just control it to the top in some way and then you just slide it forward use the fingers here push down and when you push down if you can see, guys can see that uh, push down and just pops up into your hand once you let go with the these three fingers it'll pop up boom, and then you just clip it and it's palmed so that's just a classic palm I use that all the time a lot of people like to use like a one-handed palm but I don't really see any point and use a one handed palm when it's just as effective if you use time misdirection to do a normal uh, two handed palm just to go boom like that and then you're you know you're ready to go so that palm should look just like you're transferring the deck from one hand to the other just like that okay? it shouldn't look anything weird it should look like I'm transferring the deck I set the deck down or I hand it to them to examine and I go to my pocket and drop the card in um, so uh, that's one way to get rid of it. Another way is to actually take a card like this card, the top card of the deck, and put a piece of double-sided tape right in that square here, in that rectangle here. Put a double-sided tape there. Now whenever they put it back in, you just cut it here. They put your card back in. When you square it, give it a squeeze, and now when you deal through that card, it'll be stuck to the card underneath it, so these cards will be stuck together. So when they go to look, they don't see the face of the jack club, they see the face of whatever the card is that had the tape on it. So that's another way to get rid of it if you don't if you're not confident in your uh, palming abilities. Another way is to actually ah uh, whoops. Uh, 
another way is to actually uh, lap the card. Uh, if you're at a table, why is it pull, pull the tablecloth? If there's a tablecloth, pull it over my lap. And you can lap the card by just controlling it to the top and saying, doing uh, your move, which I'm going to teach you a couple of ways of acting that you're throwing the card to their pocket. Um, and after you've done the move, just kind of come to the edge of the table. And when you come to the edge of the table, you just kind of thumb the card off onto your lap. So I would do it. I'd come over, boom, drop it onto my lap. And the card is on my lap. And it's gone. And I can kick it under the table when I leave, or I can palm it back off some other time. So um, that's another way to get rid of it. Uh, now, to do the move to create an effect that it looks like it went into their pocket, um, the way I'll do it is I'll usually say something like, Okay, um, you got a card, it's put back in, and mix the cards up. What I'm going to do, actually, here, you go ahead and take the cards and mix them, and that's when I'll palm it off into my pocket. And I'll say, Actually, you go ahead and take the cards, you give them a shuffle, um, and I'll let them shuffle, they shuffle, and I take the cards back, and I say, Okay, um, let's see. I'm going to try something, actually. Watch this. See if this works. And I'll take the cards and I'll just spring them right at them. That's usually the way I like to do it. Just take the card and just spring them right, right at them. And it just, it just drop all over them, or all around them. And then I say, you know what? This, this might sound weird, but check your pocket. Or I'll say something like, uh, or I'll leave their card and I won't palm their card. And I'll bring it up and I'll do a color change, which I have a tutorial for this on my channel. So if you want to check any of these short show color changes out, check out the tutorials for them. Um, you can do something like, say, watch. There's your card. So watch your card. I'm going to see if I can get it to jump. Watch. One, two... Three. Look, there it goes. It jumped away. See, it's gone. Now, of course, you wouldn't be using a silver card because they know, obviously, that it didn't go anywhere. It's right here. Um, but, you go, look, it's gone. Actually, you know what? Did you did you feel anything weird on your on your body or anything? I'm like, no, I didn't feel anything. You know? check, check your pockets once. I want you, I just go ahead and check your pockets. And now, I palm the card. And it's so much easier to see with that silver card. That's why I like using that. Um, but now I palm the card and I can get the card to my pocket um, or I can just drop it on my lap if I wanted to if I'm at a table uh, so there's a couple ways to get rid of it that's the card to spectators pocket uh, hope you like that explanation I hope it was good enough for you, it revealed the effect enough for you and I hope you can uh, try it out sometime let me know uh, how you did if you actually do try it out uh, but remember practice this a lot it's kind of hard to practice actually doing this unless you actually try to do it uh, because you the, the main move is actually getting the card into their pocket or into their wallet or however you're going to do it I recommend you do the pocket first because the wallet thing is kind of kind of takes some guts to actually reach over and grab someone's wallet off of them and say I don't know what I'm looking for and reach in there and pull it out so uh, if you're going to do something like that uh, I'd recommend you start off doing that to a friend. Uh, you go up to a friend and you you know say, pull out your wallet. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can uh, see if you got a dollar or five or. You know, and they pull out the wallet. You, go, you know what? Let me see that. And it's a friend, so they're not gonna be like, hey, would you don't steal my wallet. And you go, no, I'm here. I just need a dollar here. You take the wallet back, and you can go and do it that way. So that's uh, another way to do that. Uh, to practice doing that. Uh, I do recommend you start off with if you if you see someone when you're starting this off and you're starting to do this trying to build up your confidence that you find someone that does have a suit jacket on a blazer on because it's going to be a lot easier to do this and they're not going to feel the card in their pocket or anything from someone like that until you build up your confidence in doing this and you can do it and not even think in your mind that you've put the card in their pocket. Um, and just become second nature. So practice the moves. Practice uh, in front of a mirror. I like, uh, I you know, just practice that move of getting that card into the back of the box in front of a mirror, and the different cuts and forces and things like that. Practice all that stuff. Do it in front of a mirror on camera, and just practice that. Get that down. When you get that down to where you can really um, effectively do that and not reveal anything, don't flash anything. I like to do it when I practice my stuff, I'll practice in front of a mirror over and over again until the point where I fool myself. Okay, if I can fool myself and have myself like just amazed and and just not knowing what's going on, that's when I know that I'm ready to go and record it and show it to someone else or walk up to someone live and actually show it to them. So uh remember that.
practice, 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 get it down. Once you've got it down and you know you got it good, that's when you can go out and actually perform it on someone. So try that. Um, and I hope you enjoy this explanation.